Chapter 124 If the storm has arrived, I'll cut it down. The Cloud River prefectural capital was just as calm as usual, but some of the city's prominent factions smelled an incoming storm in the air. Like the Zhang family. As one of the Cloud River prefectural capitals for peak-level factions, they naturally were among the first to learn of the massacre at the House of Prosperity. Is Sui really the same person Blue River Sword Manor kicked out last year? asked family head Zhang Jian in surprise and confusion. I can't imagine how a youth who lost his entire cultivation achieved such incredible strength in just one year. It is indeed him, said an elderly retainer in a low voice. He also slew six of the prefectural governor's qi accumulation experts. Qin Wenyuan is currently investigating him in secret. This only made Zhang Jian even more surprised. He pondered out loud, this kid is quite something. He's offended two of the prefectural capital's peak-level factions at once. Either he's young, foolish, and out of control, or he has the confidence to back his actions up. He wore long, bright yellow robes, and he was whiskerless and slightly plump. This made him look like a kindly rich man. But the prominent figures of the prefectural capital all knew that Zhang Jian was a smiling tiger, his smile hid his fangs. Both his temperament and his methods were ruthless as could be. But as of yet, no one has determined the source of Su Yi's confidence, said the elderly retainer. Zhang Jian nodded. Let's keep an eye on the situation and see how the prefectural government and Blue River Sword Manor react. If there's news, remember to alert me right away. The elderly retainer nodded. Blue River Sword Manor The Sword Cleansing Spring Mu Songtu was sharpening his sword. The blade was dark as ink, and it shook and hummed as he worked, the sound echoing throughout the night sky. He was lean, with graying temples. His gaze was serious and focused. Whenever he found it hard to stay calm, he'd sharpen his sword beside the sword-cleansing spring. In doing so, his mind became as sharp and firm as his blade. An unknown amount of time later, Mu Tzu slipped his sword into a pine sheath and rose to his feet. He was a little on the short side, but as he stood, he was like a solitary, towering mountain emerging from the ground. His vast, imposing aura seemed to shake even heaven and earth. A group of silently waiting Blue River Sword Manor higher-ups saw this, and all of them bowed in solemn greeting. Mood Song Tu The sect leader of Blue River Sword Manor and a long-famed Marshal Dao Grandmaster. He was a man of few words, his temperament as firm as iron. His attainments in the Tao of the Sword had already reached the level of mastery. In the prefectural capital, people said one swing of his sword could flatten half the city. Beneath the night sky, Mu Tzu strapped his pine sheath to his back, and when he spoke, his indifferent voice clanged like metal. Tell Qin Wen Yuan that I'm a sword cultivator. When it comes to killing, I fear neither death nor defeat but I will only do what I ought to do, nothing more. With that, he put his hands behind his back and left. When they saw this, Zhou Huaiqiu and the other Blue River Sword Manor higher-ups all realized that yesterday's incident at the House of Prosperity had already awoken their sect leader's desire to kill. This is my chance! Within one of the prefectural capital's taverns, Zhou Zhili clapped and laughed. The heavens are really looking out for me. Who knows? I might very well be able to kill two birds with one stone this time. Su Yi dared act as he did. He naturally has means of coping with the resulting disaster. If you think getting involved will put you in his good graces or convince him to work for you, you're delusional. Ching Jin slumped beside the table, taking sips of wine. Her sharp, knife-like eyes carried a hint of mockery. It would, of course, be best to send him coal in a blizzard. 
But if that's not possible, isn't improving on perfection pretty good too? This time, Zhou Zhili didn't let her barbed words shake him. He said frankly, besides, our original purpose in coming to the Cloud River Prefectural Capital was to win Qin Wenyuan over to my side, but that old fox has refused to make his position clear. He clearly doesn't want to pick sides this early in the game. A cold smile rose on Zhou Zhili's lips. I'll actually be rather eager to watch as he goes up against Su Yi, then falls flat on his face, so he's practically a fallen immortal. Then, I'll step in to clean up the mess. After all that, won't Qin Wenyuan have no choice but to lower his head? He glanced at Qing Jin and continued, this way, young Lord Su will owe me a favor and I'll win Qin Wenyuan over to my side. If that isn't killing two birds with one stone, what is? Qing Jin sighed, sounding a bit dispirited. When you make your plans, you have to consider the worst possible outcome even as you strive for ideal results. It's too early to get excited. Zhou Zhili paid her words no heed. Seeing this, Qing Jin couldn't be bothered to say anymore. The petty struggles of the mundane world? How could someone like Sui concern himself with such a thing? In his eyes, both Qin Wenyuan and Mood Songtu are no different from any other Inner Furnace Realm Grandmasters. Morning the next day. The skies were overcast, it looked like rain. Humble Tranquility Cottage. As always, Sui rose, cultivated, bathed, and ate. All the while, he looked perfectly at ease. But Huang Qianjun, Feng Xiaofeng, and Feng Xiaoran obviously had something weighing on their minds, none of them were as relaxed as usual. Su Yi noticed this, but he said nothing. Instead, he looked up at the sky. He could roughly gauge that a major downpour was on its way. The arrival of a storm was actually rather fitting. Suddenly, the sound of urgent footsteps rang out from Bottleboard Alley. Young Lord Su Yi, the prefectural governor has given orders. He requests that you proceed out of the city and meet him on the Qingding military drill grounds. A man in black knocked on the door, emanating shocking murderous energy. Huang Qianjun and the others' expressions shifted. Is the prefectural governor finally making his move? All right. Su Yi agreed without hesitation. The man in black didn't delay. He simply spurred his horse on and left. Brother Su. Huang Qianjun took a deep breath. I want to go with you. It's going to rain, whispered Su Yi. Bring two umbrellas. I don't want to come back soaked. That would be pathetic. Huang Qianjun hurriedly went off to fetch them. Senior Apprentice Brother Su Feng Xiaofeng was about to say something when Su Yi smiled and stopped him. Wait a moment first. Shortly after, they heard yet another set of rapid hoofbeats drawing near. The valiant-looking Yuan Luashi dashed in, clad in military attire. Her oval face lit up with delight. Master Su, my father has already agreed to help out. Qin Wuyong followed her in and nodded hurriedly. Sui smiled, then pointed to the Feng siblings. If you really want to help, look after the two of them. I'm going to the Qingding military drill grounds, but I'll be right back. With that, he turned and walked out of the courtyard. Only then did Feng Xiaofeng realize that Sui had long since anticipated Yuan Luashi's arrival. That's why he suggested I wait a moment. So, he planned to use the Yuan family's power to look after me and Xiao Ran. Feng Xiaofeng took a deep breath, then said in a loud voice, Senior Apprentice Brother Su, I heated a jar of wine for us last night, but we never got to drink it. I'll heat another this time and wait for your return. 
Great. Sui waved without so much as a second look. Outside the residence, Huang Qianjun had already prepared a carriage. Uncle Yong, I'll leave this place up to you. When she saw this, Yuan Luashi hurried after them. Qin Wu Yong was inwardly frantic. There was no way he wanted to miss the grand spectacle about to unfold. But when he recalled the order Sui had given just now, he had no choice but to endure. The clouds were dull and gray, and the world was gloomy. Outside the city, the Qingding military drill grounds. This place was right up against the vast and imposing Great Azure. A camp of soldiers subordinate to the prefectural governor's estate was stationed here year-round, roughly 3,000 men in total. All of them were stalwart warriors. A flagpole stood upright in the center of the vast and level military grounds, the flag flapping in the wind. A group of armored elite troops stood solemnly at attention. Qin Wenyuan sat atop the platform overlooking the drill grounds, as steady as a mountain. A group of other influential members of the prefectural governor's estate clustered around him, like stars clustering around the moon. His son, Qin Feng, stood at his side. From time to time, Qin Feng gazed eagerly into the distance, he could already picture Su Yi dying on the military drill grounds. Seats lined the sides of the platforms as well. They were already packed. Practically everyone seated there was a prominent figure within the prefectural capital. These were people who could, with a single stop of their feet, influence an entire district. The sky gradually darkened, and the dense clouds overhead gave the military drill grounds a grim, oppressive atmosphere. Read the most updated version of this novel and other amazing translated novels from the original source at Pori.com. All of them were waiting. When word of the massacre at the House of Prosperity spread, all of the city's higher-ups responded. All of them knew that something big would happen tonight on the Qingding military drill ground. The head of the Zhang family has arrived. Suddenly, a voice emanated from the gates. Immediately afterward, beneath countless shocked gazes, a group walked inside. A whiskerless, slightly chubby man walked at their forefront. This was none other than the head of the Zhang family, Zhang Jian. His son, Zhang Yuanqing, trailed after him, as well as some of the other Zhang family higher-ups. Their appearance caused uproar throughout the venue. Brother Zhang, welcome. This way, please. Qin Wenyuan rose to his feet and clasped his fist. Governor Qin, I'm simply here to broaden my boy's horizons. I absolutely won't get involved in anything else. Please, relax, said Zhang Jian, responding to the greeting with a hearty laugh. He and his procession took their seats. Not long after, the voice rang out once more, provoking yet another uproar. The head of the Yuan family has arrived. This time, even Qin Wenyuan was surprised. He furrowed his brow. What's Yuan Wutong doing here, the old fox? He and Zhang Jian were on decent terms, so Zhang Jian's sudden arrival didn't come as much of a surprise, but he hadn't anticipated Yuan Wutong's arrival. The reason for this was simple, there was no bond between him and Yuan Wutong whatsoever. Rather, they walked different paths, and they rarely interacted with each other. As he pondered, two figures strode into the military drill grounds. The leader was a man in long, loose-sleeved robes. He had a bookish air, like a schoolteacher. The other was a tall, stalwart youth, valiant and imposing. These were none other than Yuan Wutong and his second son, Yuan Luoyu. Father and son brought no attendants, but who dared underestimate them? Many prominent figures of the various clans went so far as to rise and bow in greeting. Zhang Xian laughed heartily, 
Brother Yuan, I'm here to watch the show. What are you here for? I'm here to put on a show, laughed Yuan Wutong. Oh. Zhang Jian burst into laughter. And here I thought you'd come to stick up for that Sui kid. Yuan Wutong sighed with admiration and applauded. You've got keen eyes, Brother Zhang. You saw through my intentions at a glance. Truly admirable. Zhang Jian was at a loss. The others were stunned too. This declaration caught them completely off guard. Qin Wen Yuan watched from the platform. His eyes narrowed, and his expression frosted over. Should I interpret that as an admission that Su Yi dared brazenly commit murder within city limits, creating such a massive disaster, all because he had you to back him up, Brother Yuan? Just one sentence, and he'd effectively pointed his spear at Yuan Wutong. Quite a few people were bewildered and uncertain. It was obvious Qin Wen Yuan's words had influenced them. But Yuan Wutong merely laughed and shook his head. Someone like Sui has no need for the Yuan family's backing. Governor Qin, if you don't believe me, wait until he gets here and ask him yourself. Almost immediately afterward, a single, solitary carriage drove up beneath the darkness. Chapter 125 Killing with Flattery Young Lord Sui has arrived. When they heard this shout, everyone glanced outside the military drill ground gates. A carriage had stopped outside, and a tall, lean figure emerged from within. He was clad in blue robes, his hands behind his back, his bearing transcendent and aloof. This was none other than Su Yi. Huang Qianjun trailed silently after him. He's Su Yi? It doesn't look like there's anything special about him. If I didn't know better, I'd assume he was a frail and gentle scholar, said a girl in an ornate dress. She pursed her lips. The elder beside her said gravely, Lass, you mustn't speak such nonsense. Last night's battle has already proved that Su Yi is in no way comparable with a normal person. Even someone as strong as the Blue Peak Sword Elder, Zhou Huaichiu, couldn't take so much as a single swing of his sword. The power of his martial Tao is such that even the city's older generation can only lower their heads in shame before him. How could you underestimate someone like that? Yes, Grandpa. The girl in the ornate dress lowered her head in shame. By now, who knew how many eyes had focused their attention on the young man in blue? Who knew how many prominent figures of the prior generation watched him in displeasure? A year ago, Sui was merely Blue River Sword Manor's outer sect sword chief. Yet now, he dared openly commit murder on the ninth floor of the House of Prosperity. More than that, his sword had suppressed Zhou Huaichiu, the man ranked fourth amongst Blue River Sword Manor's elders. No one else in the younger generation of the Cloud River Prefectural Capital could match this feat. It really is that guy. When he saw Su Yi's familiar silhouette, Zhang Yuanqing's expression changed dramatically. He'd heard about yesterday's massacre in the House of Prosperity, too. At first, he dared not believe it. But when he finally saw Sui again, his last lingering hope that this was all just some misunderstanding shattered. I told Sui that I'd help him rise to prominence, and that I could send him soaring into the clouds. I'm afraid he must have thought me some kind of idiot. Indescribable, Wordless shame rose in Zhang Yuanqing's heart. And when he recalled how he and Uncle Xiong almost crossed blows with Su Yi back at the apricot cottage, he broke out in cold sweats. If Yuan Luashi hadn't shown up, would that guy have killed Uncle Xiong too? Zhang Yuanqing's expression shifted erratically. What is it? Zhang Jian furrowed his brow. Nothing. Zhang Yuanqing shook his head. How could he explain something so embarrassing? 
This sui is as imposing as the rising sun and as solemn as a windswept pine. There's no trace of a young man's impatience or pompousness. A temperament like this is hard to find, but the scariest thing about him is his fearlessness. Given the opportunity, I'm afraid he might very well become a second mountain subduing king, sighed Zhang Jian. The mountain subduing king, Mu Shi. Of the Zhou dynasty's nine non Zhou kings, he was the most peerless genius of the martial Dao. At just twenty years old, he stepped into the Grand Master realm. Eight years ago, at twenty three, he became the youngest of the great Zhou's foreign surnamed kings. And the emperor of the great Zhou personally bequeathed him the title subduer of mountains, the mountain subduing king. When they heard Zhang Jian use the mountain subduing king's name to praise Su Yi, the surrounding major powers burst into uproar. Unspeakable jealousy coursed through their hearts. They'd cultivated bitterly for years, yet most of them had stagnated in the qi accumulation realm. Su Yi was just seventeen, yet he'd won such high praise from the lofty head of the Zhang family. Of course they were jealous. Only Yuan Wutong furrowed his brow. Brother Zhang, are you trying to flatter him to death? Don't you think that's unbecoming of a man of your status? Zhang Jian burst into laughter. Flatter him to death? Surely not. Besides, Brother Yuan, if you fail to protect the boy tonight, it won't matter how much I say. The crowd's hearts shook. Their keen senses told them that Yuan Wutong and Zhang Jian, these two long-established top powerhouses of the prefectural capital, were verbally at each other's throats. Is the head of the Yuan family really going to stick out his neck for Sui? Many people's hearts shook. He's here. He's finally here. Qin Feng inwardly signed in relief. He'd been worried that Su Yi would be too afraid to show up. But now, seeing Su Yi here now, all of his worries transformed into excitement. Over the past few days, he had no appetite. All he could think about was revenge. Go find a safe place to wait. As he walked into the military drill ground, Su Yi ignored the crowd's gazes and casually gave his orders. Huang Qianjun hurriedly agreed. But it was then that Qin Wenyuan snorted from up on the platform. Huang Qianjun, you've truly disappointed me. Huang Qianjun went rigid, and his expression changed erratically. Finally, he took a deep breath and said, Uncle, you. But before he could finish, Qin Wenyuan waved and cut him off. Don't call me uncle ever again. I, Qin Wen Yuan, don't have a backstabbing, treasonous nephew like you. The entire crowd was stunned. Only now did they realize that the boy who'd come here with Sui had a relationship like that with Qin Wen Yuan. But it was obvious that the young man's decision to side with Sui had already infuriated Qin Wen Yuan. Huang Qian Jun was red faced with anger. Damn it, I didn't even say anything, and you're already calling me backstabbing and treasonous? Is that how an uncle is supposed to behave? Step aside, said Su Yi. Then, he turned his cool gaze toward Qin Wen Yuan. You're the lofty prefectural governor, yet here you are, insulting the people around me? What, are you trying to intimidate me? The entire venue fell silent, and quite a few people gasped. This was the Qingding military drill ground, Qin Wenyuan's territory. Who would have thought Su Yi wouldn't restrain himself even here? He was still as domineering as could be. Brazen! Su Yi, take a look around you. Don't you understand your situation? How dare you be so arrogant? Aren't you afraid of getting chopped to pieces? Qin Feng pointed at Su Yi and shouted. Qin Wenyuan frowned. 
He wanted to silence his son, because he knew full well that in this sort of verbal clash, his son was at a disadvantage. He already lost to Su Yi before, shouting like this was just inviting his own humiliation. But it was too late. Just as Qin Wen Yuan feared, Huang Qianjun, who'd already walked over to a safe corner, immediately lost his temper. He laughed coldly, Qin Feng, who was it who knelt that day? Who was it who slapped himself in the face and apologized? That incident shook the entire city. Who'd have thought that you of all people still had the gall to call others arrogant? I'm embarrassed on your behalf. You. Qin Feng's face was practically green. Shut your mouth, said Qin Wen Yuan flatly. It was just one sentence, but Qin Feng shuddered, too terrified to say any more. Even so, throughout the venue, the onlookers' expressions were strange. So this was a tiger with a dog for a son. Qin Wen Yuan could naturally sense what they were thinking, and his expression turned even colder and more indifferent. If he didn't dispose of Su Yi today, going forward, no matter where his son went, people would bring this up to humiliate him. Even as he thought this, his tone remained even. Su Yi, I invited you here of my own volition, but also at Blue River Sword Manor's request. He paused, and his expression instantly grew terrifying and imposing. You humiliated my son. I could perhaps let that go, after all, he was weaker than you. He has no one to blame but himself for that. But I cannot simply allow six of my guards to die in vain. His words reverberated throughout the military drill ground. The thousands of soldiers stationed around the area, as well as the higher-ups of the prefectural governor's estate, all wore unfriendly expressions as they glowered coldly at Su Yi. The atmosphere was so stifled and oppressive that many of the gathered experts tensed up, and their expressions shifted. But it was as if Su Yi didn't even notice. His gaze swept across the area, and he said flatly, You refuse to let them die in vain? Bring it on, then. I wanted to eliminate latent threats anyway, that's why I came here in the first place. The crowd was stunned. Su Yi was obviously standing there all by himself, yet it was as if he were a deity looking down on the world below. This wasn't just domineering. He was simply arrogant to the extreme. Qin Wen Yuan's eyes narrowed in response. Then, out of nowhere, he said, Brother Yuan, are you sure you want to stick out your neck for this boy? Su Yi was far too calm. Qin Wen Yuan found it difficult to determine the source of Su Yi's confidence. Yuan Wutong laughed. First, we'll have to wait and see whether or not young Lord Su needs my help. If he doesn't and I intervene anyway, that'd be as unnecessary as drawing legs on a snake. Old Fox Zhang Jian cursed inwardly. He could naturally tell that Qin Wen Yuan was trying to get Yuan Wutong to make his position clear, but Yuan Wutong wasn't falling for it. But it didn't matter. This exchange still made it clear to everyone present that Yuan Wutong, and by extension the Yuan family, stood with Su Yi. Qin Wen Yuan fell briefly silent. Then, he turned to the seats at his right. Everyone, Su Yi is the one who killed your family's disciples last night. Now, he's standing right in front of you. How do you propose we resolve this? The ones seated in those seats were Qian Yin Zhou, Hu Long, Lu Ying, and the other seniors. In response, a white haired elder rose and shouted, both furious and aggrieved, a fiend like him deserves death by a thousand cuts. The others shouted their agreement. That's right. Death by a thousand cuts. In an instant, Su Yi became the joint target of over a thousand men. But his eyelids didn't so much as twitch. He directly ignored them. 
he couldn't be bothered to say so much as a single word. If shouting were all it took to resolve worldly problems, what would be the point of cultivating? Qin Wenyuan was watching Sui this whole time, and when he saw the young man's calm composure and his complete lack of emotional ripples, he couldn't help but frown. He growled, Sui, don't you feel any regret at all? Aren't you even the least bit ashamed of yourself? This time, Sui frowned too, and he said impatiently, I'm here to resolve latent threats, not to listen to your nonsense. But then, you're doing this to stall for time, aren't you? You want to wait for Blue River Sword Manor to get here before you attack, right? His questions weren't the least bit polite. In response, Qin Wenyuan's eyes flashed with cold light. He was the prefectural governor, a grand master renowned throughout the imperatorial province. When had anyone ever treated him this disdainfully before? If not for the fact that, even now, he didn't understand the source of Sui's confidence, he would have attacked and killed Sui a long time ago. Even the other influential figures couldn't help but cluck their tongues. For the vast majority of them, this was their first time seeing Sui. He was just a young man, yet he was this domineering? Who wouldn't have been surprised? Only Yuan Wutong inwardly sighed with admiration. Only someone like this could create such peerless calligraphy. Read this novel and other amazing translated novels from the original source at thepori.com. He'd stayed up all night admiring that life of text, as if intoxicated. He not only didn't think it boring, on the contrary, he felt a vague sense of enlightenment, as if his cultivation were showing signs of improvement. This shook him to the core, but more than that, it made him keenly aware of just how extraordinary the master Sui's daughter spoke of really was. Suddenly, another shout echoed throughout the military drill grounds. Sect Master Mood Song 2 of Blue River Sword Manor has arrived. Everyone was stunned, and all of them looked over at the gate. Chapter 126 Flowers can bloom again, but men cannot regain their youth. The Gate of the Military Drill Ground A gaunt middle-aged man with graying temples walked inside. He had a pine sheath strapped diagonally across his back. He was a bit on the short side, and his appearance was unexceptional. Yet when they saw him arrive, who knows how many influential figures rose in solemn greeting. The younger generation disciples' expressions revealed awe and fervor. Mood Song Tu, the sect master of Blue River Sword Manor, a man they said could suppress half the city with a single swing of his sword. Rumor had it that his sword was so sharp, it could sever running water and cut through the air as if it were cloth. A group of Blue River Sword Manor's inner sect elders trailed after Mood Song Tu, but Zhou Huaichiu wasn't among their ranks. It was clear that, after losing to Sui the night before, he was unwilling to show his face in public. When he saw Mood Song to arrive, Qin Wenyuan instantly relaxed. Even though he was already planning to deal with Su Yi, it would naturally be even better if he could let someone else do all the hard work for him. Brother Mu, welcome. This way, please. Qin Wenyuan rose and greeted him with a smile. No need. Mood Song Tu refused him, his face expressionless. After entering the military drill ground, he paid no heed to anyone present. This was extremely rude, but no one dared object. Because in their eyes, Mood Song Tu had both the qualifications and the confidence necessary to act that way. Mood Song Tu's gaze locked directly onto Su Yi. A hint of confusion arose on his face. When you first lost your cultivation, I assumed you'd never cultivate again in this lifetime. Who would have thought that, just one year later, you'd defeat Zhou Huaichiu in a single blow? I'm truly beside myself with shock. The Blue River Sword Manor elders behind him all wore complex looks on their faces too. Who among them didn't recognize the former Outer Sect Sword Chief? 
But none of them would have guessed that, after just one year apart, they'd reunite in such a way. Sui said flatly, Sect Master, are you here to reminisce about the past? Or to resolve a grudge? Mood Song Tu sighed. You killed seven people. You had your reasons, and I can understand why you did it, but our standpoints are different. As the sect master of Blue River Sword Manor, I cannot simply ignore this incident. Do you understand? Su Yi nodded. Of course. Mu Song Tu stared intently at Su Yi for a moment, a conflicted look on his face. But then, he shook his head, his face expressionless once more. At my level of the martial Tao, I must use my body as a furnace to temper the five major organs to perfection, one by one. The gap between each step is enormous as a vast chasm. It is precisely because I've reached this level that I've finally understood, those attached to mundane power and authority are destined never to reach the level of Sientian martial ancestor. Thus, after this battle, I shall renounce my position as sect master of Blue River Sword Manor and immerse myself in the martial Tao. I shall never concern myself with the conflicts of the mundane world ever again. When he made this declaration, the entire venue was stunned. No one could have anticipated that Mood Songtu would make such an announcement now of all times. Even Sui couldn't help but look surprised. He could clearly sense that, within Mood Song to short frame, his blood and chi surged, as turbulent as storm-swept seas. And his spirit was as firm as a boulder. This was the highest authority of Blue River Sword Manor. He was extraordinary, both body and soul. Even his inner force was as sharp as could be, he polished it to the extreme. Although he was just a first-level grandmaster, the way Sui saw it, his foundations and accumulated knowledge far surpassed many second-level grandmasters. I wouldn't have guessed I'd encounter someone worthy of notice in the Cloud River Prefectural Capital, thought Sui. Alas, even if his foundations in the internal furnace realm were firmer, he's getting on in years. His future accomplishments are limited. All of you, retreat. Su Yi and I shall duke it out on our own, said Mood Song Tu. The Blue River Sword Manor elders behind him all retreated out of the military drill ground. Qin Wen Yuan's eyes flashed, and a faint smile tugged at the corners of his lips. This was the Mood Song Tu he knew, forthright and aloof, as sharp as his sword. Many of the major powers in attendance grew excited, and they watched with eagerness. It had been many years since they last saw Mood Song Tu in action. None of them knew just how powerful this long-famous expert, the man who could single-handedly level half the city, had become. Yuan Wutong's eyes flashed, but inside, he was a bit tense. Even though he'd heard that Sui had once slain a martial Dao Grandmaster, he hadn't witnessed it with his own eyes. Furthermore, Mu Songtu was in no way comparable to an ordinary martial Dao Grandmaster. Of course he was nervous. Zhang Jian sighed. A talented young man like that might very well perish here today. It really is a pity. Zhang Yuanqing's expression was strange. If he dies at the hands of the sect master of Blue River Sword Manor, he'll descend to the Nine Springs with a smile on his face. Non-stop discussions ring out throughout the military drill ground. It doesn't matter how strong he is. There's no way he's a match for a grandmaster, said someone. That's for sure. Most of the crowd didn't think highly of Su Yi's chances. Even though he defeated Zhou Huaichiu in a single attack the night before, and even though he'd already displayed shocking power, he was about to face a martial Dao Grandmaster. Yuan Luashi and Huang Qianjun were relatively calm, but even they couldn't help but tense up. After all, Mu Songtu was no ordinary martial Dao Grandmaster. Flowers can bloom again, but men cannot reclaim their youth. That's true for you. 
but also for the Blue River Sword Manor disciples who died beneath your sword. Mu Song Tu stood in the middle of the empty military drill ground, his expression flat. I'm here today, not to discuss right and wrong, nor to discuss grudges or enmity. I'm just here to determine victory and defeat. All I ask is that you won't blame me for my heartlessness. But Su Yi merely smiled. Attack. No need to delay any further. All right. Mood Song Tu wasted no more words. His gaze was cold and steely as he extended his hand. He used his palm as a sword, cutting through the air. Slice! Fierce gales howled overhead. A streak of peerless sword chi swept from Mood Song Tu's hand. In an instant, it was over a hundred feet in the air. It cut towards Su Yi, stirring up incomparably sharp, shrieking gales. This was an external release of astral chi. He was attacking his foe through the air. This was the extraordinary power unique to the Grand Master level. The sword chi spreading across heaven and earth landed before the attack itself. The ground beneath Su Yi's feet was covered in blue stone slabs, each as firm as steel. Yet when the sword chi swept over them, a high-pitched screeching emanated from the tiles as the energy cut startling white scars into the rock and sent stone fragments flying into the air. On top of that, the vast momentum of Mood Song Tu's sword swept over Su Yi. Were an ordinary warrior standing here, the momentum alone would have scared him out of his wits before the sword chi could arrive. This was the terrifying might of a martial Dao Grand Master. Break. In response, Su Yi merely swung his fist. His dense inner force converged. His jade like fist glowed like a pillar of light, forcing back the sword. After entering the Qi accumulation realm, Su Yi's innate vitality was well over ten times as strong as it had been in the blood circulation realm. And he'd connected and refined all 108 of his spiritual apertures. The strength of his foundations was enough to look down on anyone and everyone beneath the heavens. Combined with the attainments of his past life, this simple fist carried a vague hint of the power of nature, like an inexhaustible river. Boom! Sword chi and fist collided. It was as if lightning had struck, booms shook the center of the military drill ground. The aftershock spread out in all directions, picking up the blue stone slabs and ripping them from the earth, leaving ditch after ditch behind. The onlookers felt the entire grounds tremble, as if there were a sudden earthquake. That attack was like two grand mountains colliding, shaking both heaven and earth. Wind scattered, but Su Yi didn't move in the slightest, nor was he the least bit injured. The only thing that changed were his clothes, which now rustled in the wind. However, this only offset his upright posture. Everyone fell silent. Not one member of the audience wasn't tongue-tied. Qin Wen Yuan's expression turned solemn, and his heart shook. He actually blocked it. This. Zhang Jian immediately sat up straight. His typical smile disappeared, replaced with shock. His eyes flashed with uncertainty. Yuan Wutong, conversely, instantly relaxed. Witnessing this had shocked him too. Although there were numerous prominent figures in attendance, only four were Marshal Dao Grand Masters. They were, respectively, Qin Wen Yuan, Zhang Jian, Yuan Wutong, and Mu Song Tu. As such, only the three of them fully understood just how powerful Mood Song Tu's attack had been. It was more than enough to easily obliterate a peak chi accumulation expert. Yet Su Yi had casually blocked it with a single swing of his fist. It was only natural that this would draw their attention. The city's younger generation now burst into uproar. Shock and confusion were written all over their faces, as if they dared not believe their eyes. 
The higher-ups of Blue River Sword Manor looked stunned too. Was the sect master deliberately withholding his power? To read the uncut version, go to Pori.com. This scene shook everyone in attendance. An early-stage chi accumulation martial artist blocked that attack? No wonder you managed to overpower Zhou Huaichiu with a single swing of your sword. Impressive! Mu Zongtu's eyes lit up, and he wasn't the least bit stingy with his praise, nor did he attempt to hide his surprise. His inner force was the result of decades of bitter cultivation and years of polishing. Only then did he obtain energy so concentrated that it was practically tangible. Even that casual attack just now was powerful enough that other Marshal Dao Grandmasters wouldn't dare take it lightly. Yet Sui had casually broken it with a single, relaxed swing of his fist. This was practically a miracle. But Sui merely thought about it, then said offhandedly, You ought to have withheld half your power just now, and you didn't use your sword. But isn't that true for me too? The entire venue was flabbergasted. Just now, Sui was holding back too? Mu Songtu's eyes surged with sharp sword intent. Then I'd like to see just how much strength you withheld. Whoosh! Mu Songtu's fingers acted as his sword as he attacked once more. This time, his sword light burst forth. It was completely different from the attack he used earlier, it was like a rainbow arcing through the skies. This was Mu Songtu's true power as a martial Dao Grandmaster. He was confident that, even barehanded, this attack could split creeks into two separate streams. And that firm, despotic, terrifying sword intent descended from above, covering the earth. The space throughout the military drill ground tore like cut silk, stirring up relentless, howling gales. In response, Sui merely turned his finger into a sword and casually swept his hand downward. The Great Whirlwind Sword Sutra, one swing to pull down the Milky Way. He wasn't yet a martial Dao Grandmaster, so he couldn't release his innate vitality outside his body or kill from a distance as they could. Yet when his fingers derived a sword incantation and pierced through the air, his nails seemed to materialize a sharp, radiant edge. Bang! The sound of impact rang out beneath Mu Songtu's disbelieving gaze. Sui had casually used a single finger to split his sword chi in half. His attack struck with unerring accuracy, right where it hurt the most, exquisitely precise. You're releasing your true essence, but that's not how you're supposed to do it. The coarser your sword chi, the more openings there are to exploit, said Sui softly. Mu Songtu's foundations in the martial Dao were extraordinary, but his attainments in the Dao of the sword clearly had yet to reach perfection. His sword might look incomparably strong, but in Su Yi's eyes, it was full of flaws. The entire venue fell silent once more. Everyone in attendance was stunned. None of them could have guessed that Su Yi would break through Mu Songtu's second attack just as easily as the first.